All right, so here we're supposed to not only find the inverse and the domain, but also graph it, okay? So here we know that x has to be greater than or equal to zero. We have a quadratic and basically it's just moved up. So if we rough scratch this, sketch this, we're, we're gonna have, it's moved up to, and so that's basically what we have for this graph. Now, we put a y equals x in here. It looks like if we bring that over here, that'll be about there. And then that comes about here. And so then this looks like it's gonna do something like that. Again, rough scratch, but that's what uh, your uh, graph should look like when we're done. And so that means we're gonna have some kind of a square root and it's gonna be moved over probably two units to the right, it looks like here, all right? So it probably gonna be uh, something like this, square root of x minus two or something. So let's see. Um, so we're gonna have y equals x squared plus two. So let's subtract two. Y minus two equals x squared. Again, take the square root of both sides, plus or minus. Now, what do we know about this? We don't wanna have the negative square root. So we're gonna only use the positive. So then x is equal to the square root of y minus two. Now we'll switch our x and y's. Okay. Now uh, here, we're, we're, we're half, where do we have to have for x? Well, x has to be greater than or equal to two, or we're gonna have negative values and we don't wanna have negative values. So that's kind of gonna be our domain. And so then f inverse of x is going to be equal to the square root of x minus two. And that should be what that graph is. You know, again, rough sketch, both of these, maybe they're not as uh, smooth or whatever as they could be, but that's what it should look like. So if we go over here and graph both of them, um, let's first put our y equals x in. Then we had x squared plus two. And then we had the square root of x minus two. Okay, now notice this is not gonna give you all the things taken off. It won't give you that gone. It's just gonna give you that. And you have to remember that, oh, that was always only positive. So kind of forget about that one. And a way to do that is, if you want to think about it, is do that. And now we have, you know, that. And uh, no, no negative numbers here. So we have one to one only. And then the calculator, their scales aren't equal. And so it doesn't look equal, but that would be, you know, if we could actually have a perfect square uh, window, this then would be the inverses graphed. And that's sort of what, you know, I have here, but it's again, not, not perfect as far as being drawn. So that would be our inverse or domain and then the graph. All right, what about this one? All right, so again, we have a quadratic. And so um, we have to think about what that means. Well, if we have the plus three, that means it's gonna be shifted left and it's gonna be coming up here like this. And so this is gonna be a x equals negative three. So we have to have x greater than or equal to that negative three, basically, okay? So that's gonna be this. Now, that's gonna be our y equals x. And so now we're gonna come over here <clears throat> and it's not gonna be very nice, but it's gonna be somewhere about here maybe. And then it's gonna be basically, that's probably gonna erase something like that. So we're gonna have something over that y equals x axis coming up here and going over here. Now let's find out what the actual function is gonna be. And, and so we have x plus three squared. Now to get rid of this, we're gonna have to take the square root of both sides, plus or minus. And what do we know about taking square roots? Well, we're always gonna be use the positive, okay? So that gives us uh, square root of y equals x plus three, we'll subtract three square root of y minus three equals x. Again, when you're typing this in the calculator or in the calculator or even on, on a computer, you need to be sure to arrow out so then you can put minus three, not under the uh, square root. 
And so now we have x equals square root of y minus 3. Swap them. y equals the square root of x minus 3. And that would make sense because we have the square root of x here. And now we shifted it down three units. And so this would be at y, okay, y equals negative 3. Okay. And so that would be our graph. And what do we have for this? Well, here we have to have x greater than or equal to zero. So we always have to have positive. So that's our domain. That's where it's going to work. Okay. Now, if we graph that, you know, in, in our calculator, what does that look like? Well, we'll keep our y equals that. Now here we had, uh, let's see, we had x plus three squared. And this one, now, now see, this is if we just had square root of x and then we we're like, oh yeah, and then minus three, we didn't arrow out, that's what happens. And so we always have to be sure to arrow out, get it out here, and then minus three, make sure there's no square root over it. And then we can graph. Now this one, we'll have to have our window to negative three because that's where it starts. And so that would be what we're looking at for our uh, graph. Okay. Again, pretty much what we had on ours over here, but you know it's a little, a little smoother and a little nicer. But it still, you know, kind of looks different because its axes are not equal left and right and up and down. Okay. So that would be, oh, we didn't write it as an inverse, though, so we better write that. Uh, f inverse of x equals square root of x minus 3, and it's still the x greater than or equal to 0. All right, so here we have f of x equals 2 over x. All right, well, here we just cannot have x equals 0. So x cannot equal 0. And so we have y equals 2 over x. Now, what we did last time will work. We can say, OK, well, let's multiply by x, multiply by x. And we can divide by y or multiply by 1 over y. So when we do that, that's gone. We get x equals, that's gone, 2 over y. Now we have to swap them. So y equals 2 over x. And so f inverse of x equals 2 over x. Hmm, guess what? That's what we had up here already. But those are the way the inverses are, are equal to. And so again, this one, because you know, if you think about what is 1 over x, we've done that before. What we have is x cannot equal 0, no matter which way we do that. And so that's going to be kind of a rough sketch of, of what it looks like. Now, you know, if, if you wanted to compare it, maybe, um, let's say we wanted to compare, clear that. Let's clear that. Let's call this one 1 divided by x. And this one is the 2 divided by x. So the black one is going to be the actual function we're using. It comes up a little more. It's, it's kind of pushed out. It's, it's further this way. So that's what happens comparison, in comparison to just the 1 over x. And so that's how that's going to be. And so this one probably would like to go to minus 30 to kind of see the whole whole thing and we probably would have got to go to minus 30 here too. So that kind of gives more of a how it works. It goes all the way down, goes all the way up. And, and those are inverses here. So um, no matter how you look at it, it's going to be the inverse of itself. All right, so let's stop here and we'll come back for more.